Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I have to say I really appreciate everybody uh, watching my stuff yesterday. Uh, you know, I haven't had that much success with the video um, in between tournaments because as you guys know, of course, you know, they are not actively playing the tournament right now. Uh, so I'm just kind of taking older games. Uh, so I, I guess I kind of pulled in a gad matter uh, and just released something that was actually pretty good. So I'm not sure, you know, kind of like where they were putting my video at, where you guys found it. Um, but uh, I, I've been having some really good... Let me fix this because I, that's messed up. Let me fix that. Can I do that right? Can I get that hooked up? Okay, now I got the picture right. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm messed all up. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, uh, like I appreciate you guys very much for watching that video. Um, you know, I did not expect that I was going to get that many views on it. Um, that is the most views I've ever gotten on a video uh, when we're outside of a tournament. Normally, the success, like, actually comes from you know, the videos being shown while there's an active tournament because there's a lot of buzz and excitement around the tournament. So I really appreciate that very much. And to all of my people that are from the Philippines, a King Maga Kabagan, uh Magandango Maga, Kamusta Na, uh let me see. Uh Mary Ming Salamat Posa, uh Nana Nude Inc. A King Maga video. Appreciate you guys coming and stopping by and, and checking out my video. Uh hopefully everybody is my booty. Appreciate it very much. Um Continuously working on my Tagalog, trying to make sure that I can get, you know, some good Tagalog to you guys because um, I very much appreciate you guys supporting my chess content. Hopefully you guys get something out of it. Uh, you know, mostly it's for entertainment. Hopefully you guys are getting, you know, entertained and you guys are having a good time and everything. And, you know, I've done pretty much everything that you guys uh, would like. Uh, you know, I've evolved a lot since I first started my, 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 my chess YouTube channel. Uh, so I think that things are going pretty well, but feel free, uh, you know, anybody that has any comments or questions or any concerns or anything that they would want me to try to change and do differently, feel free to let me know. Uh, at this point, I'm able to I'm able to respond to every single comment that I get to my channel um, so I can, you know, get personal with you guys and stuff like that. As of right now, I'm not so crazy huge. Hopefully it'll be in the future. Uh, but anyways, if you guys are ready, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this game. Uh, this is taken from the uh, the Philippines grand final and it was round one uh, and it was uh, it was Richard Batum, uh, which I think some of you guys would should know um, and Roderick Nava, uh, which of course everybody out there knows. Pretty sure everybody who subscribed to me is also subscribed to Roderick Nava. It's a pretty big YouTuber there. Uh, anyway, if you guys are ready, let's roll. See what we got. So we have E4. We got C5. We got Knight to F3. And we have d6, d4, pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, knight to c3. We got a6. So as you guys know, uh, we have the Sicilian Nidorf on the board. Um, is one of the most famous chess openings of all time. Uh, Gary Kasparov famously used it pretty much against everybody. Uh, it's uh, It scores really well against e4. Um, the Sicilian does. Uh, but uh, Gary Kasparov really drove, uh, you know, he really drove this opening home um, and used it, uh, you know, very successfully against uh, Judith Polgar. Uh, she was not really able to crack his Nidorf uh, and defeat him. She got him one time, but it wasn't the Nidorf. Uh, I believe he switched over to a Berlin um, and, uh, you know, he wasn't able to draw. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have uh, Bishop G5. And so as you guys saw, this uh this developing these developing moves for for white uh are pretty much going to be the most standard way that you see the uh, the sicilian played you're going to see knight coming to f3 and you're going to see the d4 push and the, and the trades and stuff like that that's going to be the absolute highest uh, number of games in the database that you're going to see uh, of course you can play other ways but you know those are going to be the highest the highest play bishop g5 is really good you know you're you're just of course like threatening to damage uh you know black structure um, if they decide to do nothing about their knight sitting there on f6. Uh, so Roderick Nava actually, he plays the novelty of the game right now with knight b to d7. Um, and as of 2012, this was the first time um, that this actually was seen. Um, and uh, so a lot of the times you'll see like e6, uh, knight b to d7 and e6 are, are pretty equally, uh, you know, strong. Um, and then you might see something like queen to f3 and bishop to e7. Uh, you know, you're just basically just focused on making sure you defend this uh, this knight here. And so knight b to d7 does that successfully too. Because, of course, you know, if you take here, uh, you know, you're going to be seeing the knight just take back. And you really haven't done anything but give your bishop up as white. So we're not going to do none of that. Uh, so like I say, queen to f3. We see queen to a5 trying to be kind of sneaky. You know, trying to hit this bishop here on g5. Uh, but, you know. 
uh, you know, um, Batoon, Richard Batoon is not going to just let his bishop just die for no reason. So he pushes h4. Uh, we see h6, and then we see bishop back to d2, and then we see e6 by black. And it might look kind of strange because it, it might seem like this bishop uh, is now uh, directly challenging this queen. But uh, there aren't really any good discoveries for, for black. I mean, I mean, there's not really a lot that you can do. I mean, you can try to do this here. The queen will just move. Uh, you know, you're not going to do this here. Oops. Uh, you're not going to do that here because the queen can just do, it can just move as well. You know, so there's not, you know, there's not a lot you can really do uh, as far as discoveries go. So it's, it's fine to just go ahead and go a6. Um, and uh, so we see castles uh, for white. And then we see, uh, we see queen to c7. And so we have bishop to d3. We have bishop to e7. And we have queen to g3. And uh, of course, you know, if black gets careless, and just castles, you're going to be getting the bit, you know, the bishop is going to be taking that pawn because, you know, that pawn is pinned. Bam, like that. Uh, and even after knight to h5, you can just go queen to g4 and you just won yourself a pawn. Uh, so black is not going to fall for that. Uh, so we see b5. Anytime you're playing against a Sicilian, regardless of really where you uh, you castle, what side you castle on, you're going to see a6 and b5 normally. Uh, because this is, uh, you know, especially if you're castling on opposite sides, as you guys know, uh, you know, that's when you start to throw your wing pawns out. Uh, you know, you'll see like the G, the F, the, the F, the G, and the H pawns coming this way, and then the A and B pawns will be coming that way. That's usually generally what you'll see as far as attacking and stuff like that goes. So we see B5, and we see A3, and we see Rook to B8. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to go ahead and stop the video here uh, and see, uh, you know, if you were white, you know, what move uh, would you play? And, uh, you know, get back with you in a second. All right, cool. So for those of you, uh, I think a majority of you guys, if not all of you guys would have noticed that this pawn looks kind of juicy. I think maybe, I think everybody saw it, but some some people would kind of be looking and saying like, wait a minute, I feel like I can get trapped in here, right? Well, it's not that you would be trapped, but you have to be able to calculate very, very long uh, and very, very computer like uh, to figure out all of the nuances of actually taking that pawn. It is sound to do. So if you did come up with the move queen takes g7, you would be right. But like I said, I'm going to show you guys a line. Uh, you would have pretty much had to have calculated all the way down this far another five moves uh, to be able to successfully take this pawn because it's not the easiest pawn in the world to grab. Um, so the rook would come to g8, the queen would uh, take on h6, and you would see knight to g4. Uh, and then you would see queen to f4, but you'd have to place yourself in a pin or in a uh, in a fork. Uh, so the pawn would come to e5, and you would see knight to d5, a little Zweshenzug move. Uh, and then you would see queen to c5, you'd see uh, queen to g3. The queen would take on d4, and then you would see bishop to g5. So to take that pawn on g7, um, if you did initially say that, you would have been correct, but... The problem is it get it can get pretty dicey. So you would have kind of had to have calculated as far down here. But this is very computer like precision that you would have had to have had. Um, and I don't think I personally would have went down this line. I think I probably would have, you know, played what was played in the game to just be on the safe side. Um, but like I said, if you did see queen takes g7, uh, you would have been accurate. Um, there are some times where intuitively you can feel the correct move, even if you haven't calculated all the way down. So. A good job if you did find that move. Um, but what was played in the game after rook to b8 um, was rook h to e1. Um, a pretty sound move. I mean, it's not like it's a bad move by any means. Um, but, uh, you know, I would have definitely been trying to calculate as far down as possible with this queen takes g7. Uh, because the pawn does look kind of juicy. And then, you know, you would have followed up by taking this pawn as well. Uh, so we have king to f8. Now, you know, you're, you're pretty much solid uh, as far as your development goes for white. So you do have to kind of, you know... Uh, protect that pawn also you know the tactic that I showed you guys earlier is live on the board um, so we see f4 f4 is a very common move that you'll see a lot of the times uh, either pushing f5 or you know threatening e5 and stuff like that so now that we have our rook behind the pawn you know that's a good time to start to throw those forward get some lines and stuff open especially because the king is in the center so you know I'm trying to take advantage of that so we see knight to c5 uh, we see e5 pawn takes e5 pawn takes e5 and we see b4 so i'm basically going to be titling this uh as you guys will see when you click on the video uh the the roller coasters watching the game 
And as you guys know that I've talked to before, a Zweish and Zug is basically like whenever you, whenever, let's say, for example, a Zweish and Zug move is, so you have pawn takes e5, right? So automatically you have your knight, uh, you have your knight attacked. So the general reply is going to be to try to save your knight by moving somewhere, right? A Zweish and Zug move, or what we like to know as an in-between move, is a move that you throw in there that's other than the expected move. So it's going to be b4. You're not expecting b4 to come because you're like, man, your knight's, your knight's getting messed up, right? But also the queen is pinned here, so you're not going to be taking the to knight on f6 anyway. Uh, so we have uh, pawn takes b4, rook takes b4, we see knight c to e2. Uh, we have knight f to e4, we have bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, we have queen to f4. And then after knight takes d2, we see queen taking d2. Uh, we see uh, bishop to d7. Uh, so as you guys can see, even though the king is kind of messed up here a little bit, there really isn't a lot that white can do to kind of take advantage of the, the king's position, especially because you have both of these bishops. Uh, so any type of tactics you might have on e6 are just fully taken care of by this bishop. So, um, you know, black is in a pretty black is in a pretty dominant position here. And so we see g3. Uh, you know, taken care of. Uh, we couldn't have took immediately, of course, because, you know, the, it would have been dropping the rook. So we see uh, g6. We see c3. We see rook to a4. We see knight back to c2. Uh, we see bishop to c6. Knight e to d4. We have bishop to d5. We have rook to f1. And we have g5. Uh, and we see rook to f2 in the game. Uh, just trying to give as much protection, you know, laterally as possible here. Something else that would actually would have been pretty strong uh, for Batoon if he had seen it would have been b3. And then after something like maybe rook to a2, the king would come over to b1. After queen to a5, you see queen to d3. Um, and this is a very, very dominant position by white because, I mean, c4 is going to be coming. So that's going to be knocking the bishop away from the protection of this pawn. And then you're going to be seeing some tactic coming up here. And, you know, maybe you can plop a queen here, you know, do some type of you know, stuff with this pawn being pinned. So, you know, it's looking kind of nasty, looking kind of nasty for, for black in this position. But like I said, we did have rook f rook to f2. We see queen uh, takes e5. We see rook d to f1, rook to h7. Uh, we have rook to e2. Uh, the queen taken on g3. Uh, and we have uh, the knight to f5. Uh, and uh, I'm going to actually ask you guys to stop the video again. There is a golden move in this position that Roderick Nava actually does find. And it basically just holds the entire position together because it looks kind of dicey right here for black. Uh, like I said, if you want to go ahead and stop the video and see if you can find that golden move, uh, go ahead and do that real quick. OK, cool. So for those of you that that recognize that, uh, you know, of course, you can't take the pawn. You know, you can't take the knight here because the queen is dropping. Right. Or the bishop is dropping. Uh, and you just seem to kind of have some problems as far as taking this bishop and stuff like that, you know, kind of getting your king open. Because, of course, if you take here, the king takes, you're going to be picking up this bishop for free because of the pin on the king. So the golden move, congratulations if you found it, was queen to c7. And queen to c7 just perfectly holds everything together. You can back this rook up. This bishop is now protected by the king, by the queen. So there's no trades here. There's no forcing the king over. Everything is completely held together. So queen to c7 was a beautiful find. Uh, by Nava. Um, and, you know, so sometimes, so he's thinking defensively. So sometimes you do have to think defensively when you're playing. You can't always think about attacking and think about what your opponent's doing. You know, you have to try to, you know, make sure that, you know, your pieces are protected and secure uh, and everything like that. So, bam, just checking my lights here. All right. So uh, we see knight takes e7 and then the queen takes e7. Like I said, that was the key, make, moving queen to c7. So we see rook e to f2. We got rook to g7. We have queen to e3. Uh, we have rook takes h4. And as you can see, uh, just kind of looking at it mathematically, white is in a very, very dire position right here. Uh, they are down a severe amount of pawns. And all of these pawns on the king side are completely passed. So there really isn't anything that's standing in the way for them to become a queen or just push themselves down the board. Uh, so as you can see, it's starting to get really, really bad uh, for Batoon. Um, so we see queen to e5, which is, you know, the strongest move in the position for white. Uh, we see king over to g8. So now the now black has basically broken all of the different pins and tactics possible. Uh, so we see knight to d4. We see rook to e4 uh, challenging the queen. So we're having to back the queen up to h2 now. And so we see g4. So as you as you can see, like I said, those those pawns are starting to get rolling. We see rook to f6 and we see g3. Queen takes g6 and we see g2. So as you can see, the, the pawn started here. And we've pushed it all the way down to where it's almost queening. So 
we're basically got, we're basically putting White in a completely defensive position now. So after Rook to G1, this is not where you want your Rook. Just sitting there, like pretty much just preventing a pawn from promoting. You know, that's not where you want that at. So we see Rook E to G4, just, you know, driving the point home with the pawn. So we see Knight to F5, uh, pawn takes F5, and we see Rook to D6, and then we see Rook 4 to G6. Uh, and it is in this position uh, that Richard Batoon does resign the game. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, if you just kind of look at it, like, I mean, there's three pawns for white, there's a bishop in, in involved, you're down an entire piece. There just really isn't anything left for you to do, um, here as white, um, other than to resign, you know, so that is that game. Uh, you know, I appreciate everybody coming by and stopping by. Um, if you have any specific games you want me to try to cover, feel free to let me know. Uh, but other than that, um, I'll still be polling, um, occasionally, um, but, uh, you know, I think I might be onto something with showing some Roderick Nava games. It seems like everybody really likes to see Roderick Nava. So, you know, I can definitely go ahead and continue to show those games and then get back on the Wesley. So when they do have, you know, some more tournaments, um, they do have one on the 13th, uh, that it's showing that he is involved in. Uh, so that's definitely going to be a good time and stuff. So that's five days away. Um, so like I said, uh, Mary means Salomon, Kai Begon, uh, Messiah, Akong, Makita, Kang, Muli. Appreciate you guys coming by. Thank you very much, Mabu Hai, uh, and I will see you guys next time. All right.